This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Sign up at patreon.com slash metniff to get your name in the thank you credits, along with early access to every FUDW. Check out the link in the description to become an FUDW superfan. And I say, hey! It's breakfast time, and DW is chewing out Arthur harder than a bowl of crunch cereal. Because while she might not like breakfast, DW always fills up on vitamin C U N T. Arthur is exhausted, since DW has been keeping him up all night with her non-stop banging. Get your head out of the gutter! Arthur explains CW has been slamming doors and screaming at everyone non-stop. You're just making me go to bed because you don't want me around! You don't love me! You wish I wasn't even born! Say what you want about the Reed parents, but at least they never scold their kids for telling the truth. The next night, Arthur invites Francine over for a kosher dinner of french fries and mashed Potatoes. Are they hypoglycemic? What's with all the starch? DW is picking out. Mrs. Reed tries to be a responsible parent for once, which earns her more jabs and insults from DW. Francine tells her to knock that shit off, shattering DW's fragile ego. Once again, the Reed parents don't do a goddamn thing to discipline their child. Francine takes it upon herself to figure out why DW is being a total doofus. Her words, not mine. I'm too tired to think of any more mean things to say. That's a first. DW's tantrum is getting worse, to the point Arthur's worried the cops might get involved. You have the right to remain silent. I will not be silent! I'll be as loud as I want! And, and you can't stop me! No one can stop me! God if only. Francine deduces DW is in a very bad mood because she's upset about something. The phrase, no shit Sherlock, comes to mind. Instead of just asking DW why she's upset, Francine and Arthur decide to spy on her, and fail miserably. Something wrong! It's because... Because Arthur is a dodo brain! Got him! DW tells Francine to fuck off, prompting Mrs. Reed to scold her child for the second time in her life. Too little, too late. DW tells her mom she wants to go to the movies. Mrs. Reed tells her to fuck off. Francine volunteers to take DW to the movies, giving Arthur a panic attack. Arthur and Francine take DW to the movies, only to realize she dragged them there to crash a birthday party she wasn't invited to for a girl she barely knows. DW tries to one-up the birthday girl, only to make a fool of herself, and then demands to leave before the movie even starts. Francine confronts DW about her scheme, but never questions why DW was taking her anger out on her family rather than the girl who didn't invite her to the party. DW describes her ultimate revenge fantasy, in which she not only rains out Lisa's party, but drains the color out of their bodies. Jesus Christ. Francine resolves to keep DW's sociopathic fantasies at bay by inviting her to her own birthday party. DW is thrilled, as she now gets to brag to Lisa about being invited to a third grade birthday party. Only we never see Lisa again after this episode, because she was probably murdered by DW and buried in a shallow grave. Let's review. DW went on an unholy tyrant of screaming and slamming doors because she didn't get invited to a random girl's birthday party. She took out her frustrations on her family, who did little to nothing to discipline her bad behavior. She tricked Francine and Arthur into wasting their own money just so she could crash the birthday party and then immediately leave when things didn't go her way. And in the end, not only was she never punished for her bad mood, but she was even rewarded with a trip to the movies and an invitation to an older kid's birthday party. So remember kids, don't forget what happened to the man who bitched and moaned until he got everything he wanted. He lived happily ever after. F U D W. And I say, hey! Arthur is excited for his first sleepover with Buster in the brain. Mr. Reed reminds him that his sleepover isn't until Saturday and tells him to get rid of his prematurely pitched tent. During breakfast, Mr. Reed shares an article about an alleged UFO sighting. DW sees this as her ticket to fame and fortune. DW plans to take a picture of the UFO with her rabbit-shaped camera, which is cute until you realize rabbits are people in this world. DW accidentally takes a picture of herself walking in on her father with Mr. Ratburn. Buster says his mom doesn't want him to go to the sleepover because of the UFO story. Fortunately, she changes her mind with little to no prompting from Mrs. Reed. That night, the three boys dream about the aliens and the sleepover with Arthur's being the scariest. Arthur, Mom and Dad say you have to let me come to your sleepover. Ah! The next day, Mr. Reed is setting up the tent. No, no, get the fuck out of here with those sandals. DW is looking for UFOs in the daytime, as one does. She suspects her dad of being an alien imposter. Her suspicions are confirmed when Mr. Reed acts as a responsible parent and disciplines his child. It's the night of the sleepover, and DW is two for two on crashing parties she's not invited to. Arthur tells her, in no uncertain terms, to fuck off. 
Mrs. Reed tells D.W. to go to bed, confirming both Reed parents have been swapped with aliens who actually know how to discipline the four-year-old brat. The boys look for a flashlight, unaware D.W. has already taken it. Uh, where do you keep that? I'll never tell. The sleepover is in full swing when the boys spot a UFO outside their tent. Surprise, surprise, it turns out it was just D.W. who was determined to ruin any gathering she's not invited to. The boys get their revenge by scaring the shit out of her. D.W. catches on to their scheme and calls them out. Just then, an actual UFO shows up. D.W. practically wakes the neighborhood screaming about how rich she'll be, unaware she's fallen for Arthur's prank. D.W. heads back inside with her tail between her legs. And yes, aardvarks have tails. Arthur makes the foolish mistake of pitying his sister and inviting her to the sleepover, which she enjoys for all of five seconds. This is boring. I'm going to bed. What the fuck? The episode ends with the same shot from the 8 minute mark because animation is expensive. Let's review. D.W. became obsessed with finding proof of UFOs in order to get rich. She decided to use Arthur's sleepover as a means to get her proof, even though she wasn't invited. When Arthur told her she couldn't come, D.W. went out of her way to ruin his sleepover and then shat the bed when the boys got their revenge. And even after Arthur begrudgingly invited her to the sleepover, she bailed the second things got boring. F you, D.W. Arthur explains how the bleep button is used while filming a show, which raises several questions. For example, wouldn't it make more sense to just add the bleep in post? And if the show's being filmed with bleeps in mind, why not just write the show without swears? Whatever, we're not even at the two minute mark and already my brain is fried. Arthur shows how the bleep can be used on his show, inspiring millions of YouTube poops for years to come. Mom! Arthur just your favorite that's nasty. D.W. takes control of the button and refuses to stop f***ing Arthur. D.W. is bull shopping with Grandma Thora when she overhears an older boy call his mama Instead of asking her grandma what the word means, D.W. decides to pester Arthur. What does mean? God damn it. Arthur tells her not to say the word around their parents. Her imaginary friend tells her to just ask her parents what means. D.W. ignores her conscience, believing the word will make people break things whenever they hear it. Still wanting to know what the word means, D.W. decides to ask Tweedledee and Tweedledum who tell her the word is used to hypnotize adults into doing whatever you want. They encourage her to say it in front of their teacher, but she chickens out at the last second. The Tibbles call her a scaredy cat, which is a weird insult when you realize cats are people in this world. And also cats. She then decides to trick her next door neighbor into saying the word to her family. D.W. spies on her neighbors from her bedroom when her mom calls her down to dinner, leading to the most unintentionally hilarious moment in the episode. <laughs> run, <baby! laughs> the Molinas rat out D.W. to her parents, leading her to fall back on her go-to excuse. Uh, Arthur did it? What a <laughs> The Reed parents decide not to punish her because she didn't know what she was saying, which is some real bullshit. Unfortunately, the damage is already done because the next day at preschool, everyone is swearing like sailors, which just goes to prove that the consequences of your actions don't go away just because of ignorance. Let's review. DW learned a bad word and refused to ask any grown-up what it means. She ruined Arthur's plane AGAIN and ignored her conscience who begged her to tell her parents. She instead confided in her two least reliable friends who proceeded to trick her into thinking swear words give kids power over adults. D.W. was too chicken to test it out herself and tricked her younger neighbor into saying it instead, getting her in trouble with her parents. D.W. then proceeded to not only say in front of her mom, but used it as an intentional insult. And despite teaching all her friends to swear and calling her mama D.W. is never punished because there is no God. And even though Arthur can't swear for real on his show, I certainly can on mine. Fuck you, D.W. Arthur is excited to go to summer camp when D.W. comes in to literally stomp on his dreams. As it turns out, the Reed parents have planned a week-long family vacation to the beach. Arthur tries to convince his parents they should go on the trip by themselves, until he realizes he'd have to bring D.W. to camp with him. D.W. insists on bringing her shark toy named Sharky, 
which he uses to knock Arthur on his ass. Before hitting the road, Mr. Reed asks D.W. if she needs to use the bathroom. D.W. says no. Then five minutes later makes the family pull over so she can use the bathroom. Because of this, the family gets stuck in traffic for several hours, trapping the Reeds in a hot car with a shitting baby. D.W. begs her parents to stop at a diner for lunch. Well, there's Chef's Surprise! Surprises are fun. Is that why you have three kids? Surprise, surprise, the chef's surprise is surprisingly shit. DW badgers a group of bikers into giving her one of their burgers, which she shares with no one. The reeds are back on the road when Sharky accidentally falls into another truck. DW refuses to stop screaming, forcing her dad to chase the truck for several hours. The Reed family arrives several hours late to the hotel which has already given away their suite to another family. Mr. Reed is so mad, he changes into Arthur's clothes in two seconds flat. The new room is a piece of shit. D.W. and Arthur are forced to share a bed, which D.W. insists on also sharing with Sharky. Arthur tries to make the most of the pool, but D.W. can't even let him enjoy that. Mr. Reed treats the family to a lobster dinner, and inexplicably allows D.W. to bring her goddamn shark toy. D.W. freaks out at the sight of the lobster and makes a scene in the restaurant. The next day, the Reeds are stuck inside because of the rain, as they start to realize spending a whole vacation with D.W. might have been a bad idea. Arthur reaches his breaking point and prepares to give D.W. a long overdue ass whooping. I'ma kick her ass. Someday, but not today. Arthur single-handedly saves his family's vacation by taking them to local tourist attractions. D.W. insists on picking the next activity and ends up dragging her family to a gory shark movie. I can't believe you chose this movie! Don't look at me! It was Sharky's idea! Okay, but that's worse. I mean, you, you, you do get how that's worse, right? The rain has stopped, and the Reed family finally gets the beach day they wanted. Arthur ends the vacation on a high note by burying D.W. alive. Let's review. D.W. ruined her family's whole vacation. A vacation that would have been ten times better if she hadn't come at all. Don't believe me? If everyone except D.W. had went on vacation, they wouldn't have had to stop for unnecessary bathroom breaks, which means they would have avoided the traffic and wouldn't have had to chase down any rogue sharks. They would have made it to the hotel on time, meaning they would have gotten to spend the whole vacation in the family fun suite and would have been able to enjoy their lobster dinner in peace. They still could have spent the rainy day exploring the town and avoided being traumatized at the movies. Plus, they still would have had their family fun day at the beach, without D.W. and her stupid fucking shark. And we never see Sharky again after this episode, because D.W. probably got bored of him after a week and buried his body in a shallow grave on the beach. F.U. D.W. Arthur and his mom return from the store with groceries. D.W. wastes no time criticizing their selections. Maybe next time you can drive to the store and buy whatever you want with your money. Arthur describes D.W. as a picky eater because you can't say fickle bitch on PBS. D.W. lists out all the food she doesn't like, with spinach being at the top of the list. She also lists the food she does like, including PB&J, ice cream, and hot chocolate mixed with her brother's tears. The next night, the Reed family goes out to dinner. D.W. refuses to eat her salad, begging the question, why did she order it in the first place? D.W. realizes it's made with spinach and instantly loses her shit. This is spinach, and I hate spinach! Then why did you ask for it? D.W. launches her dinner onto the waiter, making him quit on the spot. And let me tell you, I used to work the graveyard shift at a Burger King, and getting an employee to quit in the middle of their shift is no small feat. The Reeds get kicked out of the restaurant. They return home where Grandma Thora is babysitting Kate. Looks like the Reed parents brought the wrong baby to dinner. D.W. is grounded. Finally! (laughs) Mrs. Reed makes it clear D.W. will not be going to any more restaurants anytime soon, including Grandma Thora's birthday dinner. Grandma Thora says she doesn't want to go out to dinner without D.W. It just wouldn't be a happy birthday if D.W. wasn't there. Bullshit! Arthur worries he'll never get to do anything fun without his sister, including going to Jupiter. Which doesn't make any sense because Jupiter is an uninhabitable gas giant. And Arthur would know that if his teacher spent more time teaching instead of lusting after Mr. Reed and his pastry sack. Arthur has six days to completely change D.W.'s personality. But unlike the book where D.W. realizes what she's missing out on and decides to change on her own, Arthur chooses to trick her instead. He fools her into eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich filled with spinach, causing her to barf directly onto the camera. Gross! It's two days until Grandma Thora's birthday, and all of Arthur's plans have failed miserably. Arthur says he has no choice but to resort to Plan X. 
Arthur pretends to call Grandma Thora to make DW think they're going to the restaurant after all. DW changes her mind once she realizes her family might have fun without her and begs her parents to let her come. The Reed family celebrate Grandma Thora's birthday at the Once Upon a Restaurant which looks like a child's dream and a building inspector's nightmare. D.W. almost immediately tries to back out of her promise to her parents. I hope they have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without spinach. I thought you were going to try something new and eat it all. Oh, yeah. Their food is served by waiters dressed as the three bears, which is a weird costume when you remember bears are people in this world. And also bears. D.W. orders the Little Bo Peep Pop Pie. Her family waits with bated breath for her inevitable tantrum. Thankfully, D.W. loves the pot pie, which, surprise, surprise, consists mostly of spinach, and not lamb, as the name of the dish would imply. D.W. tries to gaslight her family into thinking she loved spinach the whole time. Let's review. D.W. refused to eat anything that wasn't sweet and sugary. She made a scene at a restaurant which resulted in their waiter quitting his job in the middle of the dinner shift. She publicly embarrassed her family and got them banned from the restaurant. She put Grandma Thor's birthday dinner in jeopardy and refused to change her eating habits until she thought her family might enjoy a nice meal without her. She only agreed to eat spinach by being tricked into doing so, and then tried to gaslight her family once she realized she actually liked it. So remember kids, she's a pain in the rump who eats what she wants. She's DW, the Thunder Cunt. F-U-D-W. Arthur is in the middle of a Mad Max when D.W. comes in full fury. She arrests Arthur in the middle of the race and locks him up without a trial. Arthur says D.W. sometimes gets carried away, which is like saying Hitler once got carried away in Poland. D.W. is at the library, where a firefighter is giving a speech about safety. The firefighter gives D.W. a whistle and deputizes her as a junior safety officer. A hollow gesture with a meaningless title that gives D.W. all the ammo she needs to launch a tirade of tattling on the unsuspecting populace. D.W. uses her whistle to stop a kid from getting hit by a car, which is nice, but what dumbass kid just runs into the middle of the road? Matthew! Touché, D.W. Touché. The woman thanks D.W. for saving her son's life, unintentionally stroking D.W.'s ego to full mast. Arthur and the Brain are building a derby car for the upcoming rally race when D.W. blows her whistle directly in their face. She says the car is unsafe to drive, despite the fact that it's obviously not finished. Mrs. Reed blindly agrees with D.W., forcing the boys to rebuild their car from scratch. Better safe than sorry. That's what I always say. You've never said that once in your life, and you know it. D.W. proceeds to snitch on everybody in town. Stitches be damned. She drives her family crazy with her non-stop whistleblowing and barges in on Arthur during a bath. What the fuck? Arthur and crew decide to stalk D.W. to catch her breaking her own rules. Time that could be better spent building a dope-ass derby car for the race. D.W. is skipping down the street, waving her arms around like a dumbass. Arthur nearly catches D.W. off her guard before getting a chocolate surprise to the face. Arthur worries D.W. will ruin the race with her ungodly obsession with safety. The Reed parents tell Arthur he has to bring her, much to his dismay. D.W. says she only wants people to be safe. Her parents tell her to stop being a fucking tattletale. It's the day of the race, and D.W. is itching for a snitchin. Arthur tells her to fuck off until the race is over. D.W. is stuck in the back of the crowd, unable to tattle to her full potential. She decides to climb a tree so she can continue to look down on everyone. As it turns out, D.W. is just as bad at climbing down trees as she is at keeping her mouth shut. The race comes to a screeching halt as the fire department rushes to get her down. The parents of the year show up just as the hoopla dies down. Arthur tries to lie to his parents to spare T.W. the embarrassment of what just happened. But she can't even avoid snitching on herself. D.W. tells her parents what happened, getting both her and Arthur in trouble. You both know better. And you know better than to let your daughter out in public without a leash. By the grace of God, D.W. seems to have learned her lesson, as she no longer uses her whistle to butt into other people's business. And we never find out who won the race, but it's likely Arthur's car fell apart right after the fade to black, because he wasted all his time trying to put D.W. in her place when he could have been building the best derby car the world will never see. Let's review. D.W. used a safety lecture as an excuse to snitch on her friends and family. She drove everyone crazy with her non-stop screaming and whistleblowing. She invaded everyone's privacy and threatened to ruin the race for Arthur. When Arthur tried to get rid of her, she put snitching above her own safety, creating a public emergency and delaying the race. And even when Arthur tried to keep D.W. from getting in trouble with their parents, she couldn't resist the urge to snitch one last time before throwing in the towel. 
F-U-D-W. And I say, hey! D.W. is playing with her dolls. She imagines a scenario where a bride and her servant are trapped in a lifeboat surrounded by hungry sharks. We're not even ten seconds into the episode, and already D.W.'s unquenchable bloodlust is on full display. D.W. refuses to share her toys with baby Kate, who accidentally breaks one of the dolls. D.W. cries to her mom that Kate killed her favorite doll, which is some very specific wording to say the least. Mrs. Reed ignores her daughter's psychopathic tendencies and tells her to play nice with Kate. D.W. continues to bully her baby sister, even threatening to pinch her until she cries. Mrs. Reed has had enough of D.W.'s shit and tells her to go to her room. But what did I do? You were born! D.W. is surprised her actions actually have consequences. She convinces herself this is all Kate's fault. D.W. begs her mom to let her come back downstairs. Mrs. Reed tells her she can come downstairs in 10 minutes. D.W. starts crying that her mom doesn't love her, which she instantly stops once Mrs. Reed is out of earshot. D.W. impatiently watches the clock, fearing that time has stopped. She leaves her room to find that time has in fact frozen, and she couldn't be more thrilled. She takes advantage of the moment by stealing Arthur's cookie and giving away his dog to the Tibbles. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Surprise, surprise, it turns out it was just her imagination. Her father sends her back upstairs. You don't have to treat me like a criminal. We both know that's not true, and my legal team is gathering evidence as we speak. DW is two minutes into her punishment, which so far she's managed to spend entirely outside her room. DW claims she has the meanest parents in the whole world. DW is such a bad liar, even her imaginary friend calls BS. DW reminds Nadine of when she was forced to be Arthur's slave while he was sick, which didn't happen and the time her family went to Cousin Lucy's wedding without her while she was forced to stay home and clean, which also didn't happen. D.W. leaves her room again to beg her mom to end her punishment. When her scheme fails, D.W. decides to go over her parents' head and tattle to Grandma Thora. Nadine reminds D.W. she isn't allowed to walk to Grandma Thora's house by herself, which wasn't a problem when she ran away when Kate was born. Instead of just calling Grandma Thora, D.W. decides to sneak out the window until she remembers how gravity works. D.W. leaves her room for the fourth time in ten minutes to find her family playing happily without her. They don't miss me. They're glad I'm not there. I mean, you're not wrong. Mrs. Reed asks D.W. to watch over Kate, which is exactly how this mess got started in the first place. D.W. claims Kate has been a pain in her ass all day, like when she kept D.W. from shoplifting, interrupted her playtime, and selfishly demanded for D.W. to share her toys. D.W. comes to the realization that she is a horrible garbage child, and apologizes to Kate. Too little, too late. Her mom comes in to tell her that her punishment is over, even though she was only actually in her room for about five minutes. D.W. now wants to stay in her room and play with Kate, but just when it seems like she's changed for the better, D.W. goes right back to torturing her dolls by feeding them to her sharks. Let's review. D.W. refused to share her toys and threatened to hurt her baby sister. When she got grounded, she spent half her punishment sneaking out of her room. She tried to paint herself as the victim by making up blatant lies about her family and tried to run away to her grandma's house. She convinced herself her parents didn't love her anymore and that baby Kate was the source of the blame. And it was only after her epiphany that D.W. realized how much she sucks and decided to show a shred of dignity to her sister. F.U.D.W. Arthur explains how D.W. demands everything be equal and balanced, which is nice until you realize she's the one holding the scale. D.W. is using a playdate with Emily as an excuse to stroke her ego. She brags that all her toys are better. D.W.'s pride is put in jeopardy when she discovers Emily has a French nanny. Instead of telling her mom why she's upset, D.W. comes up with a scheme to get a French nanny of her own. D.W. is having dinner with her family, and the brain, for some reason, when her parents tell her she's going to start getting allowance of 75 cents a week, which nowadays would be roughly $1.25. Not too shabby. D.W. plans to flex her cash to her friends, as she believes all relationships are monetarily transactional. However, she soon realizes her friends already get allowances and earn much more than she does. D.W. resolves to correct this problem by billing her parents for all the money she believes she deserves. The Reed parents tell her to fuck off. D.W. decides to go the opposite route and become a total kiss-ass. She does all the chores in the house, 
working herself sick and breaking half the dishes in the process. She tries to goad her mother into raising her allowance and fails miserably. DW pretends to be sick so she can stay home from preschool. She tries calling the mayor to demand everyone get paid the same amount of money, which actually isn't a terrible idea the more I think about it. DW pesters Arthur and his friends to find out how much their allowances are, which leads to the group having a fight that threatens to end their friendship for good. DW realizes she can just lie to her friends about how much money she has, even though none of them actually give a shit. Mrs. Reed tells DW she should be grateful for what she has and shouldn't be jealous of those who have more. The lesson goes right over DW's head as she struts into class acting like she's the Grand Fromage, which is French for pretentious bitch. DW offers to buy milk tickets for everyone in class, until Miss Morgan points out that all her money is fake. DW's ruse is exposed and has a full breakdown in the middle of class. Emily takes pity on DW and offers to share her allowance so they can stay friends. DW demands to see the money first. The Tibbles point out that Emily is more generous than DW, leading DW to try to be more generous than Emily. DW quickly backtracks and says they should each keep their own allowance. DW promises to never obsess over money again, only to immediately break her promise and hit up her grandma for her extra allowance. And we never see Emily's nanny again after this episode, because she was probably murdered by DW so she and Emily could truly be equal. Let's review. DW became green with envy at the thought that her friend might have something she doesn't. When her parents started giving her an allowance, her first instinct was to flaunt it to her friends. When she realized her friends make more money than her, she tried to extort her parents for a higher allowance. She prompted a fight among Arthur's friends, which threatened to end their friendship for good. DW ignored her mother's advice and proceeded to flaunt her imaginary wealth to her classmates, only to make a fool of herself. And even after she made up with her friends, she still tried to go over her parents' heads and extort her grandma for extra cash. F U D W. Arthur is watching the Olympics, and DW couldn't give a rat's ass. She'd rather watch My Little Pony, until she discovers the Olympics give out gold medals. DW begs her mom to let her sign up for gymnastics, specifically so she can win awards and get famous. Mrs. Reed reminds DW she's quit every other activity she's joined after only a few days. A waste of time and money that could have been better spent on counseling and ADHD medication. Desperate for any excuse to get her daughter out of the house and off her ass, Mrs. Reed begrudgingly agrees to take DW to gymnastics lessons. DW discovers she's in the same class as Emily and the Tibble Twats. We see Emily in the company of her replacement nanny, who was probably hired after her previous nanny disappeared under mysterious circumstances. <clears throat> Mrs. Reed describes Emily as smart, pretty, and polite. Three traits DW lacks in spades. DW tries to get on the balance beam so she can one-up Emily in front of the class. Her instructor tells her she won't be allowed to use the balance beam for at least a year, and has the kids pair up to do somersaults instead. Be my partner? I guess so. The fuck was that about? DW attempts to do a somersault and falls flat on her ass. Emily shows her how to do it correctly, only to be mocked and insulted by Why is this kid blue? The kids move on to handstands, as Emily proves she's way too advanced for a beginner's class. DW's jealousy causes her to fall over, knocking over several of her classmates in the process. She then tries to do a cartwheel and manages to fall all the way off the mat. The next day, DW is practicing her moves in the most reckless way possible. She goes to the grocery store and ends up destroying the place with her shitty cartwheels. The next week in class, the kids are back to doing cartwheels when, hold on, are blue rabbits actually a thing in nature? Huh. I'll be damned. DW manages to finally do a cartwheel, only to get shown up by Emily. The instructor scolds Emily for showing off before leaving the kids alone for several plot convenient minutes. Emily apologizes to DW because that's what a good friend does. DW rebuffs her apology and decides to do a cartwheel on the balance beam. The Tibbles goad her on as she nearly falls to her death. Jump! 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 For some unexplicable reason, Emily tries to keep DW from killing herself and rushes to get Mrs. Reed and the instructor from outside. What exactly were they doing together outside before Emily got them? The world may never know. The Tibbles are giving Emily shit for being a snitch when DW tells them to fuck off. DW apologizes for being a jealous brat and Emily offers to help her improve her cartwheels. Unfortunately, DW loses all interest in gymnastics when she sees a horse on the ride home and begs her mom to let her take horse riding lessons. Thus the snake has consumed its own tail. Let's review. 
D.W. begs her mom to let her take gymnastics, despite her history of quitting every activity she's tried. She instantly got jealous of her friend and took every opportunity to try and put her down. She struggled to do the most basic moves and destroyed an entire grocery store with her janky-ass cartwheels. When Emily bested her again, D.W. tried to do the most dangerous thing she could think of, risking her own life. And even after she made up with Emily, she decided to ditch gymnastics after only a week to pursue riding lessons, once again at the expense of her mother's time and money. F-U-D-W. And I see... Arthur is having a peaceful afternoon at the library when D.W. comes in to ruin the vibe. Arthur laments about being forced to bring D.W. even though she can't read which is like bringing a blind man to a puppet show. D.W. keeps shouting at Arthur to help her read, despite the signs that say no talking. D.W. says she can't read the sign, even though she's been to the library before and would therefore already know the rules. Arthur tries to open the show before D.W. interrupts him to throw his own words back in his face. Ricard is... Shh. The sign says no talking. What a bitch. D.W. begs Arthur to check out a picture book for her. Arthur tells her to get out of here with that shit, as that weak-ass baby nonsense would fuck up his street cred. The head librarian, Paige Turner, tells D.W. she can check out the book herself if she gets her own library card. The only requirement, you have to write your name. Once again, D.W.'s illiteracy proves to be the source of her own demise. D.W. brags about all the books she'll be able to get once she has a library card. Arthur tells her to nut up or shut up. D.W. spends three hours trying and failing to write her own name wasting five trees worth of paper in the process. D.W. is mad at her parents for giving her a difficult name, while the rest of us are mad at them for giving birth to her at all. D.W. discovers she actually can write and wastes all the mashed potatoes spelling out her name. Look out, world! D.W. Reed writes! D.W. gets her library card, and the power immediately goes to her head. As it turns out, the book she wanted has already been checked out. Miss Turner assures her the book will be back next week. Unfortunately for Miss Turner, D.W. doesn't have that kind of patience. D.W. calls the library every day to check if the book has been returned. Seven days later, D.W. wakes up Arthur at 6.30 on a Saturday, like an asshole. They get to the library only to discover the book hasn't been returned yet. D.W. demands the police get involved. Arthur refuses to waste his weekend at the library and plans to leave without her. That is, until D.W. threatens to tattle to their mom like the snitch she is. D.W. watches the front desk like a hawk and even harasses poor Aloysius Zimmerplotz, who only wanted to read about trains. Surprise, surprise, it turns out the Tibble Turds had the book the whole time. The terrible twosome warns her if she damages the book, the library will take away her card forever, which is a scary thought until you remember D.W. can't actually read, so it'd be more like taking away shoes from a guy with no legs. D.W. is so scared of damaging the book, she keeps it hidden in a shoebox all week with her blankie, which I promise I'll talk about later. Arthur assures her the book won't explode if she opens it. I'll open it if you're so worried. Arthur realizes this is the first book he ever checked out, which is something he definitely would have remembered before now, considering how horny he is for books. Being a good big brother, Arthur reads the book for D.W., who laments she has to return the book that day. Arthur tells her she can renew the book as many times as she wants, which immediately backfires once he realizes D.W. will force him to read the book to her until the end of time. And we never see Aloysius Zimmerplatz again after this episode, because after getting harassed by D.W., he was too scared to return to the library. He likely entered witness protection and assumed the new identity of Buma McKerney. Let's review. D.W. made a huge fuss over getting her library card so she could check out a book she can't even read which is like obsessing over getting your license even though you don't have a car. The only thing standing in the way of her getting a library card was her own illiteracy, which she wasted several tons of paper trying to conquer. When she couldn't check out the book she wanted, she badgered the library every day for a week until it was returned. And even after she got the book, she was too scared to read it for fear of getting her library card taken away. When Arthur graciously offered to read the book to her, she rewarded his kindness with the promise of eternal tedium and repetition. So remember, kids, if your younger sibling asks you to read to them, don't play nice, because they'll make you read it twice. A day. Every day. For the rest of your life. F-U-D-W. And I see Hey, I have a Patreon. Sign up at patreon.com slash mattneff to get your name in the thank you credits, along with early access to every F-U-D-W, and the chance to vote for future episodes.
If there's a movie or show you'd like me to talk about, top-tier patrons can commission a review for my channel. Check out the link in the description to become an FUDW superfan. What a wonderful kind of day.